Please note that the Burnet Nutrition Podcast is for educational purposes only and is not meant to substitute for the advice of a doctor. Please consult your GP before using any of the techniques or products discussed on this show. Hope you like it. Welcome to episode four of the Burnet Nutrition Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Navarro. On today's show, I will share the story of my father's change in perspective on dietary fats, as well as the true functions of cholesterol in our bodies. We will also go into how correcting our beliefs on cholesterol can be key to unlocking the gates to fat loss. But first, let's hear the news and announcements. You know, there is a lot of confusion on how to effectively apply a ketogenic diet. There's just so much conflicting information. This is something I struggled with when I first started my transformation. Well, after diving into the science, I was able to drop 60 pounds of pure fat in 7 months. And in the process, I learned so much that I knew I had to tell the world. So I created 5th Stage Keto. I put everything I learned through my own journey to health into my audiobook, giving you what is needed to see the biggest changes in body composition and finally reach your goals. And 5th Stage Keto is an audiobook that also includes the ebook. So you can see the workouts included both for the gym and for home workouts. Plus recipes to some of our favorite comfort foods like keto bacon pepperoni pizza and garlic chicken with lemon zucchini noodles. Insanely good. Just head over to burnitnutrition.com to get yours. And don't forget to use the coupon code BURNIT for a bonus $5 off. Again, that is burnitnutrition.com. Also, if you want to help support this show, then you can do this by becoming a Burn It Patreon member. This will allow us to keep this show on air. And you even get a copy of Fit Stage Keto when you sign up as a Burn It member. So head to patreon.com forward slash burn it and help support the show you love. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook under Burn It Nutrition to check out some of my progress pictures. And subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already, and even share it with your friend who wants to learn more about a healthy lifestyle in a fun way. Well, I'm so glad you're with us today. How about we get this show started? I hope you're ready because this one is a must listen. Burn it. You are not alone as you begin this new stage of life. Learn the strategic methods to reach your goals and flourish the light within. With our guidance, you will uncover the hidden truths that have been missing from your understanding. It's time to let it burn. Thomas Edison once said, The doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Edison really was a man ahead of his time. He saw the importance of finding the root cause of a problem. And almost a hundred years after his death, modern medicine still doesn't prioritize nutrition and lifestyle for the prevention and therapy of a disease. I want to share my father's journey to health, a journey that forced him to make big shifts in perspective that changed the course of his days with us. It brings a smile to my face when I think back to my younger years. Growing up in Southern California, my whole family would wake up early for our Sunday breakfast at our local IHOP. It was starting to become a weekend tradition that we all looked forward to. I can still remember how my father would always order the same thing, his egg whites, veggies, and dry toast. He always made sure to remove any fats from his order, and the servers began to catch on that he was very strict with his diet. My father was a man that put high regard to his health and was known throughout our extended family to have great discipline with his prescribed diet. You see, my father had been diagnosed with high cholesterol. When he was first diagnosed, his total cholesterol was at 400 milligrams per deciliter and his triglycerides were sky high at 1,400 milligrams per deciliter, reaching dangerously high levels. 
His doctors urge him to stop consuming fats, and especially saturated fats like bacon, butter, and cheeses, so he did. Father wasn't a drinker or a smoker. He wasn't overweight by any means, but on the contrary, in his younger days he was a star soccer player, or how we like to call it, football. He had always been a great example to the family, and if you met him, he seemed pretty healthy. So to hear he was at risk of a heart attack really startled us. He promptly began taking all measures to bring his cholesterol numbers under control. And so my mother began cooking with most dietary fats out of his diet, all in efforts to improve his health and reduce his high numbers. My father also began taking statin drugs that were prescribed to him in hopes of lowering his risk of sudden death. As the years went on, he stayed disciplined with his diet, and mother continued to cook as the doctors recommended. She would prepare his morning breakfast as he requested, whole grain toast with low-fat cream cheese, plantains, and oatmeal. He was eating more and more carbs and lean meats since fat was strictly forbidden. But still, his numbers stayed high. He wasn't sure why he wasn't getting better. His frustrations kept building to a point that he questioned the ingredients my mother was using to cook. Well, finally, the statin medication he was prescribed began to slowly bring his cholesterol numbers down. But his overall energy and vitality were also fading away. My father was doing everything the doctors instructed, but it only brought on severe fatigue with no improvement on his overall health. The diet and medication he was told to take only seemed to improve his health on paper, yet it was still draining the life out of him. He described it as a constant battle to find the energy to enjoy even the simple things in life. Well, over time, the diet that was meant to keep him healthy eventually led to my father developing type 2 diabetes. He now had a new health risk to worry about, and over time, his diabetes progressed and got more and more out of control. So much so that his blood sugar was close to 300 milligrams per deciliter. The doctors gave him little options other than more drugs and even suggesting insulin injections, which wouldn't fix the underlying problem. The future seemed grim, and he was running out of options. The doctors he once thought were there to help him were actually making him worse. As the years went on, I grew up and began my own journey, going through my own set of growing pains. I developed insulin resistance, which led to my obesity. My weight ballooned to 280 pounds, and I also decided to do something about it. Like the majority of us, I too believed the conventional wisdom on fats and avoided them at all costs. I attempted all the mainstream tactics to get in shape, but they never seemed to work. The lack of energy from the calorie restriction made progress practically unattainable. After all my efforts, my body just didn't seem to respond to the methods I was trying, and I ended up on the same road to heart disease that my father was on. That was until I learned the real truths behind how the body works. After diving into the research and discovering the effective methods for a body transformation, I learned the actual functions of dietary fats and the true benefits of cholesterol. I applied what I learned and went on to lose 60 pounds of pure fat in 7 months, improving all aspects of my life. I knew I had to share this new lifestyle with my family. I had to let them in on this life-saving research. So, I began telling my father the news, letting him know that the decades-old science he was following was being proved false. I tried convincing him that the egg yolks he had avoided for years were now okay to eat. I shared how cholesterol is actually healthy and essential to our survival. Let's just say he thought I was crazy. He wasn't about to start eating butter, cheese, and bacon like I was. For years, he had been told to cut those out if he wanted to live a long and healthy life. Plus, the rejection of fat was everywhere. It was clearly the message all over the mainstream media. So convincing him was going to be a challenge. But if there was anyone I wanted to help, it was my father. So I had to keep trying. I kept explaining the research over our dinners, but his former beliefs were hard to overcome. Looking down at our plates, you could see that there was a clear divide in our theories of health. And then, on one random night just like any other, 
I was finally able to sway him, and he agreed to give it a try. I had to ask him what changed this time, what compelled him to change his mind. He went on to explain that the methods his doctors prescribed clearly weren't working, so why not give it a try? In a way, he learned from Albert Einstein's definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. His current plan wasn't working to improve his health. It was just making his diabetes worse with each passing day. So, he decided to make a change. He called on his mental strength and decided to make a shift in perspective. We sat down and went over the science where I explained that heart disease is multifactorial, meaning there are various causes that increase the risk of heart disease, but consuming healthy fats isn't one of them. He learned about some of the true factors he should really be focusing on. Issues like chronic inflammation and the damage caused by eating high amounts of refined sugars. Well, the very next day he began to change his dietary choices. He drastically decreased carbohydrates from his diet in addition to raising healthy fats. It took some time to him to grasp the idea that butter, coconut oil, and even bacon were healthy. But he was willing to give it a shot. And as the days went on, he noticed a big change. That's right, within days, his energy improved and he was starting to see what I was so excited about. As the weeks went on, I followed up with him to see how things were going. We sat down for a delicious dinner, this time with identical plates full of healthy fats. He explained that a small part of him was still worried that eating dietary fat was harmful. He shared his unease over his possible elevated cholesterol numbers. At the same time, he also revealed to me that while he had his concerns, in his eyes, the renewed energy and vigor he now had was worth having cholesterol. In his own words, he said, I would rather live with high cholesterol and feel this good than to lower it and feel as terrible as I did. I assured him that he didn't have to worry. The science was proving that cholesterol had several key roles for optimum health and that there are several studies that clearly showed that dietary fat reduced the cardiovascular risk when on a low-carb ketogenic diet. Also, interestingly enough, the dietary fat and cholesterol on your plate doesn't get converted into cholesterol in the blood. Cholesterol in the blood can come from the consumption of excess sugars being converted into fat by the liver by a process called de novo lipogenesis. This helped reduce his concerns and he went on to implement the same discipline on the ketogenic diet that he had on the low-fat diet his doctor suggested. And this time it was beginning to pay off. In just one month of shifting his perspective and making the changes to a keto lifestyle, he was able to bring his blood sugar levels down by 100 points. The last glucose test he took showed his blood sugar numbers down to 125 milligrams per deciliter. He was in awe over the improvements, especially because he hadn't exercised very much, even though he knows it's good for him. He also had his doctors run a standard lipid panel after over seven months on the keto lifestyle, and everything looked to be improving. His total cholesterol was down to 125 milligrams per deciliter, and his triglycerides were at 122 milligrams per deciliter. His good HDL cholesterol even went up by nine points, going from 34 to 43 milligrams per deciliter. My father is on a path to reversing his diabetes and hasn't felt better in years. These new changes in lifestyle were doing more for him than any other drugs and diets his doctor ever prescribed. The diabetic markers kept improving, yet he still had moments when it felt too good to be true. But he couldn't hide the fact that the fog was finally lifting from his life. He later went on to express his anger over the thought of his doctors possibly being aware of these dietary methods and never mentioning them. For years, he lived with the idea that cholesterol was the enemy and that his diabetes had no cure, being led to believe that he would be taking drugs for the rest of his life. But now that he found the answer, the joy for his life was back. I also showed my parents how to bake healthy, low-carb breads that they enjoyed with cream cheese and fresh coffee. Eventually, they became pretty good at making the cinnamon pecan keto bread 
and made sure to have a fresh batch every other week. This filled the house with yummy aromas which we all love to come home to. But more importantly, it gave them more options and made sticking to the low-carb lifestyle much more sustainable. My parents are excited for what their future holds and are planning a trip to celebrate my father's renewed vitality. Let's now discuss the truth behind dietary fats and the real benefits of cholesterol. In 2014, Time Magazine published as their cover story, Eat Butter, with the headlines that read, Scientists Labeled Fat the Enemy, Why They Were Wrong. This popular mainstream magazine finally came out with the truth, a big change and shift in view from their 1984 cover story, where cholesterol was the bad guy. Their change in perspective is a good example of being willing to see the science and making the appropriate corrections. So, what are the true functions of cholesterol? One of the many important jobs it has is as a precursor molecule for the creation of vitamin D, which is crucial for all systems of the body, such as the bones, fertility, and the strength of the immune system. Our brain is another part of our body that depends on cholesterol to thrive. It is one of the most complex organs, and you want to do all you can to make sure it's functioning at its greatest potential. The cells of our brain, as well as our nervous system, use cholesterol as a building block to allow their various functions. One of the ways our brain uses cholesterol is in making a fatty material called myelin to coat each nerve cell. This allows for smooth transmissions of electrical impulses. Cholesterol is also vital for women during pregnancy. Their body raises production to allow the ability to create new life. Even breast milk is rich in cholesterol, and it is crucial for the development of the baby's little brains and immune system. And these are just a few of the functions of the body that can be improved on a keto lifestyle. I hope it gives you a better idea of why dietary fats and cholesterol are our allies and shouldn't be seen as villains. So how did our nation develop such a fat phobia? How did we get to this point where more and more people are having issues with obesity and diabetes? These are health problems that are starting to become a real epidemic, but it wasn't always like this. If you go back and look at our history, our general population was much thinner. And the interesting part is back then they didn't have gyms at every corner. People were naturally healthier. So what changed since then? Well, to start, Back then, they didn't have access to all the junky fast food like we do. You can now drive down the main street of any town in our country and see back-to-back -back fast food restaurants. Many are lured in with the convenience of cheap meals and regularly eat junk food instead of making a good home-cooked meal. This gives us a glimpse into why some of the areas with the highest rates of poverty also have the highest rates of obesity. In our past, most people ate real whole foods without hidden ingredients that you can't even pronounce. They had nutrient-dense, local-grown foods full of vitamins and minerals. And they didn't avoid healthy fats. They cooked with real butter, not refined vegetable oils that are highly inflammatory. So what happened? What changed? Well, this unfortunate transition began when cholesterol became the bad guy and the new theory on health was being experimented, and our entire nation was the test subjects. Scientists and even government agencies entrusted with the duty to keep our country healthy moved us towards this new shift. A shift away from a method of eating that had been done for hundreds of years. And unfortunately, the studies used to make these drastic changes were flawed. The health of our country for the decades that followed came down to a single hypothesis from an incomplete research of a scientist named Ansel Keys. He unveiled his theory at the 1955 World Health Organization, where he gave a presentation where he showed a chart with the amount of heart attack deaths in relation to the percentage of dietary fat consumption. He plotted the data of the six countries on the chart, and yes, it did show a sharp increase in deaths with the more fat consumed by the country. Still, many were skeptical. 
but it did seem like a possible answer to the increase in heart attacks that were being seen at the time. Unfortunately, what many didn't know is that his chart left out data from 16 other countries. You see, Ansel Keys had the data for 22 countries in total, but only showed the information of six. And when the data for the other countries was also added to the chart, made a clear association between cholesterol and heart disease become not so obvious. Meaning there was no clear signs that heart disease was a direct cause of the consumption of too much dietary fat. It's also important to note that the data used in this study came from FAO's food balance sheets. These sheets are an inaccurate way to measure food consumption since they give data for food availability in the country, not actual food consumed. So, this is something to consider. A few years later, he began a large study to better prove his theory, the famous seven-country study that began in 1958. This involved the help of other scientists coming together to gather the data, but Keyes was the clear leader of the pack. And from there is where we get the theory named the Diet Heart Hypothesis, stating that high saturated fat consumption causes high cholesterol in the blood, which leads to heart disease. This study, with the help of Ansel Keyes' ability to be highly persuasive, influenced the major dietary guidelines that were implemented for the decades that followed. A diet that promoted higher carb consumption and the use of highly inflammatory and refined vegetable oils that oxidize more easily instead of healthier sources of healthy fats like grass-fed butter. But a noticeable flaw in Key's theory could be seen in the people from France. Their diets had higher levels of saturated fats, yet had few reports of heart disease. This was known as the French paradox. This flawed theory of Ansel Keys was the foundation of the American Heart Association's 1961 dietary guidelines. These new guidelines didn't really catch on until the start of the 1980s. By then, his theories were now getting traction, and the country went into a full-blown fat phobia that ended up derailing our health for the decades that followed. Our nation was made to believe that saturated fat was to be avoided and that carbs were heart healthy leading to generations of Americans having serious battles with obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and even cancers. It boggles my mind to think that there wasn't a full review of his data before giving the green light to make such drastic changes in guidelines. And now, modern doctors of our highly evolved technological era are still relying on nutritional advice from this decades-old, flawed research. Learning the truth behind cholesterol and the benefits of healthy fats was hard to grasp at first. This was truly a paradigm shift I wasn't expecting, but I was willing to see the science and make the necessary changes. Unfortunately, many didn't get that chance. Most people were too deep into a fat phobia that was widespread and deeply embedded. Over the years, as many began putting great effort into their health, they followed the recommendations and began to consume less saturated fats. People did this in efforts to reduce their cholesterol numbers to avoid the risk of heart disease. Many with similar stories like my father, where they followed the recommendations of the food pyramid, consuming high amounts of so-called heart-healthy carbohydrates and focusing on trying to buy low-fat everything. Greater numbers of people even started to increase their exercise, all for the chance to live a long and healthy life. What were the effects of these changes? Did they work in reducing the rates of heart disease? Well, unfortunately they didn't. It wasn't the answer for many just like it wasn't the answer for my father. And sadly, people with regular and so-called healthy LDL numbers began having heart attacks all over the country. The eye-opening data was discovered by a nationwide study conducted by the UCLA School of Medicine. They evaluated the blood lipids from 136,905 patients between the year 2000 and 2006, who were admitted to the hospital after having a heart attack. They found that 75% of these patients hospitalized after a heart attack had LDL cholesterol within the ranges they believed to be safe below 130 milligrams per deciliter. 
And out of all those patients that came in with heart issues, 21% of them were actually on cholesterol-lowering medication. What would be even more shocking to most mainstream doctors is that 50% of those patients had LDL readings less than 100 mg, which is thought to be the safest levels to prevent heart attacks. This should have made more doctors rethink this flawed theory, but that wasn't the case. Hopefully more mainstream doctors will realize that focusing on LDL levels as a key marker for heart disease risk isn't as reliable as they once thought. There is a saying in medical school that goes like this, 50% of what we know is wrong. The problem is we don't know which 50%. Well, it seems clear to me that the decades to come will show that blaming cholesterol for heart disease will be on the half that they got wrong. The reality is that most mainstream doctors go through very little education on nutrition. And some even say they are too busy to go into the new research for themselves. Now the ones that do see the evidence and speak up get ridiculed by their own colleagues for going against the grain. The 17th century poet Alexander Pope once said, no one should be ashamed to admit that they were wrong, which is but saying, in other words, that they are wiser today than they were yesterday. Yes, earlier scientists and government agencies gave us flawed information. But this doesn't mean that they knowingly did this. They may have acted with good intentions. Nevertheless, they shouldn't continue to deny the facts just because they got it wrong the first time. We all make mistakes, but each day is a new chance to make things right. There seems to be a glimmer of hope in a small group of doctors who are continuing to expand their knowledge. Doctors that have implemented the new technology that's available and realize the true causes of heart disease. They are taking what they learned and are helping thousands of patients with methods like the paleo and ketogenic diets. These type of doctors aren't that common, unfortunately, at least not yet. But my hopes are that with time and effort, we can spread the good news and greatly improve our nation's health. It will take some time to see big changes, but with more and more patients coming together as a community and helping each other, we'll help bring on change sooner. Remember that long ago, even the brightest minds on the planet believed that the earth was flat, but they too were able to shift their perspective. So you may be asking how all this mind-bending information about cholesterol will help you in your weight loss journey. How is knowing the truth behind cholesterol going to open the gates to fat loss? Well friends, listen up and learn how to use this strategically to reach your goals. To see progress in your journey, you need to change your perspective on fat. It shouldn't be seen as the villain but as your ally. Before this shift in our perspective on cholesterol, we thought that fat was to be avoided, not just for weight loss, but to simply survive. Well, now that we know that dietary fat is not dangerous, we can use it strategically to shift our body into a fat burning machine, allowing your body to more easily tap into your own fat reserves and release the body fat you have stored around your belly. You see, when you become ketogenic, you change the main fuel source of your body from a sugar burner to a fat burner. This helps you control cravings and allowing you to walk past those donuts at work without any desire to eat them. Carbohydrate consumption has the opposite effect, sparking intense cravings that release the fat storage hormone insulin. In episode 3, we talked about insulin resistance as well as insulin and how it causes our body to be in fat storage mode. Check it out if you haven't already. Well, now the good news is that we can skip the sugar roller coaster of being on a low fat diet because we no longer have to fear fat. We can use healthy fats and a keto lifestyle to lower insulin levels and stay in fat burning mode for longer, allowing us to more easily reduce total calories without the hunger pains. One of the many perks of the keto lifestyle I love is the reduced hunger. The hardest part of being on a mainstream low-fat diet is the constant hunger pains you have to endure. 
Over time, this wears you down, leading to binge eating and completely derailing your progress. Keto foods like butter, cheeses, avocado, and even ribs and steak that you are actually allowed to eat will be full of healthy fats that help you keep you full for hours. Before keto, if I went three hours without food, I would have serious mood swings and hangry episodes. So much so that I would have to apologize for my attitude after I had stuffed my face. I'm happy to say that is no longer a problem. For years, pharmaceutical labs have tried to create a pill that would control hunger. Well, a ketogenic diet does that for you naturally. And when you do decide to eat, it's absolutely delicious foods that allow you to lose weight and improve your health in the process. The reason keto works so well is that it naturally makes you eat less since fat is so satiating. It also helps that there are no cravings, allowing you to stick to the plan and allowing for long-term success. This is very important if you have a lot of weight to lose. We have reached the segment of the show where we talk about some yummy options. So what's on the menu? Today, we have delicious homemade keto lettuce-wrapped bacon cheeseburgers. If you used to think that cheeseburgers were unhealthy, well guess again. In reality, the only part that makes it unhealthy are the buns. Toss those and you are good to go. So here's what you do. Get some ground beef with a higher percentage of fat and put it into a big bowl for mixing. Then add some salt, pepper, garlic powder, chili powder, and onion powder and mix those in. You can put on some latex gloves and use your hands to do this. Next, you will get some eggs, mayo, and melted butter and mix those in as well. Then, add some cheddar cheese and add that to the mix. Lastly, chop some yellow onions and toss them in. Once all the ingredients are mixed together, you can then form your burger patties. Now you don't want to overpack your burgers. Pressing them too tight will make them less juicy. You also want to make them a bit wider than normal since they rise in the middle. When you go to cook your burger, you can actually flip it several times. This will help it cook faster and more evenly, as well as keep it from burning. Once the burger is cooked, fry some bacon, and if you'd like, fry an egg to throw it on top. This is optional, but absolutely delicious. Put it all together inside your lettuce wrap, and voila, you'll have a finger licking good burger. And get some napkins, because you're going to need them. You can also add jalapenos and more cheese, or some thin sliced tomatoes and pickles if you'd like. You can go to our website at burninnutrition.com to see the full details on how to make this yummy burger and many other recipes that will get you closer to your goals. I hope you found some good takeaways from this episode of the Burn It Nutrition podcast. We want to make health and weight loss fun and interesting to listen to. I hope you see the importance of being willing to see the evidence and being open to hear the real stories of others who have seen success with their goals of health and fitness. It's important that we keep learning and progressing to improve our nation across the board. We can't just focus on having the strongest military in the world and ignore our general health as a nation. We can't ignore the clear and obvious negative effects our current dietary guidelines are having on our health. We have to address these issues before our health as a nation becomes our Achilles heel. If you want a step-by-step guide on how to use the methods to see real progress towards your goals, then get my body transformation plan called Fifth Stage Keto. Just go to our site at www.burnitnutrition.com to get your guide. Or go to the show notes and click the link that says Reach Fifth Stage Keto. The guide has recipes to some of our favorite comfort foods, as well as the game-changing Burn It Green Smoothie. This is full of micronutrients and healthy fats to feed you at a cellular level and upgrade your life. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, then please give us a review. That way we can keep it going and help reach more and more people before it's too late. I hope this new perspective will get you excited and motivate you to take the initiative to improve your life. I hope you join us on the next show. It won't be the same without you. Now brace yourself because it's time to let it burn.